गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम टू ट्रांस इंडिया रियल पीपल रियल इमोशंस इन द लास्ट फ्यू इयर्स द बिगेस्ट स्लीप इन द रोड ट्रांसपोर्ट इंडस्ट्री हैव बीन इन द स्पेस ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी राइट फ्रॉम ट्रक्स टू बैक एंड ऑपरेशन टू सेफ्टी फीचर्स एंड मैनेजमेंट पैरामीटर्स टेक्नोलॉजी हैज अंडरगॉन मैसिव चेंज एंड द सेम हैज बीन सक्सेसफुल इन चेंजिंग द फॉर्चून्स ऑफ दोज कंपनीज हु हैव बीन ओपन टू अडॉप्टिंग and embracing technology needless to say with so much trust on technology there is room for many players who are willing to provide solutions to the logistics industry one such company that has a wide spectrum of solutions for the industry is fleetex which was founded by vineet sharma abhijit gupta parveen kataria and vishal mishra in the last few years the company has made custom built solutions for the industry and in the process also raised funding for its operations trans india caught up with the ceo and co-founder of fleetex vineet sharma to know more about the company and the solutions that it has to offer through a unified platform fleetex leverages the power of ai iot and data to enhance efficiency increase safety and reduce costs a technology enthusiast vineet began his career at oracle and accenture before leading a large product and engineering team at ixigo a prominent travel company as a driving force behind fleetex big data engineering he has built a robust data processing pipeline that powers the platform's advanced capabilities vineet holds a btech degree from iit roorkee which he completed in 2008 So here is our interaction with Vineet as we discuss the journey and challenges of Fleetex and its roadmap for the future. Right, Vineet. To start with, how did the idea of Fleetex come up? Where was this born? Yeah. So basically, uh, there are two things uh, uh, which I want to mention uh, as a story, where uh, being a techie, right, myself and my co-founder Abhay, right, uh, we used to work together uh, in Oracle in. Uh, a startup called Ixigo, right, where we were building a lot of products and scaling and handling a large engineering team. So we have seen that journey of of how a startup is 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 uh, uh, scaling, right. So we always wanted to build something of our own, right, where we can solve a large problem. So we were always looking for ideas. Uh, so in 2016, uh, we were building a taxi meta search engine for uh, Ixigo. right okay. uh, where we were trying to bring offline taxi operators online uh, and compare their prices with the uh, the online players of like of ola uber etc okay. so in that uh, uh, you can say journey when we were meeting lot of these taxi operators we figured out that it was very difficult to actually integrate them with our you can say solution right so there was no technology they were using a uh, lot of pen and paper excel sheets etc okay. so primarily the idea started there where we started thinking in the direction that how they are managing their fleet right especially the mid to large size of the fleet owners taxi operators primarily so that's where we started thinking that what if if we build a kind of operating system for fleet management mm-hmm. right where they can bring all their operations online a uh, kind of digitize them right and then we put our actionable insights on top of it okay. so so that was the idea we started with uh, in 2017 uh-huh. uh, we were never i mean we in the early days we were not focusing on tracking okay right the taxi fleet operators were our primary uh-huh. customers okay so that was the idea yeah but tell me you know transport has always been yeah. considered a very chaotic space yeah yeah so what attracted you to this space No, I think transportation and logistics. We all know it's a it's a kind of a backbone for any economy across the globe. Right. So, and we also are aware of the challenges that it is uh, kind of a lag lagging behind in terms of digital transformation. The penetration of technology was low. Right. Uh, a lot of you can say uh, challenges of skill manpower were there. Right. And people were just using technology for the sake of using it. right they were not looking from the point of view of the roi and if you look at that any developing countries who is trying to be a developed country or let's say if if we talk about india if we are trying to reach to 5 trillion dollar economy logistics and transportation is going to play a huge role 
right and that's where i think we also see a lot of push coming from the government side as well okay. right so that's what happened in us and china as well right True. so a lot of you can say uh, improvements uh, needs to be done and i think technology plays very important right in the logistics and that's where we thought that i think with the technology and with our you can say expertise we can actually uh, solve a lot of complex problems in logistics mm-hmm. right and uh, actually contribute towards the nation building as well right yeah. so you know before you got into this space what was your initial assessment or initial study about this in industry what were the yeah, you yeah. know the key points <laughs> that came across so uh, i think we we uh, before starting fitex we met i think a lot of customers for for almost 6 months mm-hmm. right where i think and just for the fact i think when we were starting there were almost 200 plus gps tracking companies in india right but if you look at and go more deep they were all chinese suppliers kind of a chinese white label True. which people were selling True. and the customer was only using that just for the sake of using it because someone has told them that okay i will give you the business only when you will have a gps tracking a device correct absolutely they were not looking at it in terms of uh, you can say reducing their operational cost Well, actually, using of, it, it was it was more of a showpiece. Yes, it there. was a showpiece yes. just for the having it that okay, I am Correct. getting a business because of this. It has no other purpose. True, and lot of people were still you can say not using the product. They were just using the hardware piece. When I say product, there was no application of software which people were using. For example, people were still downloading the Excel reports, downloading the reports. from the system and is still doing the all the analytics or whatever insights they want to have through the excel right so that defeats the purpose of software right if you are not using the software for you can say using the real time actionable insights Absolutely. right there is no use of software correct so that that was one insight where and another another challenge was that there were a lot of you can say issues regarding the reliability and you can say uh, 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 accuracy of the data right whatever data you were getting right until unless that is accurate or you can actually trust the data you will not going to trust uh, uh, the analytics also right so the, there were two problems initially which we thought of solving that how we can actually improve the overall accuracy of the data mm-hmm. how we can use the very stable devices right and have a better control on the devices as well so that we can solve a lot of challenges at the hardware level also right and then how do we use that data to provide real time actionable insights to solve the challenges right which which can actually help the transporter or a fleet owner to improve the overall efficiency or the productivity of the team or and eventually reduce the cost as well right so that was the idea so when you actually came down to doing business with the transporters what were the initial product offerings that you came up with yeah so initially i think uh, vehicle health monitoring was one of the a uh, unique uh, value proposition which we started with mm-hmm. which was not just a normal gps tracker it was a obd device which you can actually plug and play okay. right and can extract a lot of data from the ecu right mm-hmm. on which you can build a lot of insights around fuel around your red blue around your driving behavior driving behavior was one of the challenges right that and then for a typical trucker right one of the challenge was that how do they increase the overall utilization of the vehicle Mm-hmm. as well as how do they actually improve the customer satisfaction right. right for a trucker the customer satisfaction means that if i am reaching on time or not right absolutely so how do you actually monitor that in a more automated manner mm-hmm. right so a lot of people were not tracking that a lot of people were just looking at the location of the vehicle in the map right True. they were not looking it at from the loading point to unloading point right what was the eta what was the detention whether there was a route deviation or not whether there was any any sort of unnecessary stoppages or not and then how do you generate a lot of anomaly alerts right in the real time so that a control room team at the transporter level can take action on that right so the data was not really being used yes so so people were just still thinking the fleet management as a gps tracking and vice versa okay. that was a myth that the fleet management is all about gps tracking in yes. the map yes and gps tracking is all about fleet management Right. people were not thinking beyond that that how do you actually use that location mm-hmm. data okay. to solve a different challenges and having an impact 
which can actually give you more business also right. because if you are able to give a good customer satisfaction you are going to get more loading from the customer and similarly how do you improve the overall utilization so that you are reducing the cost right so the, these were the things which which we started pitching in mm -hmm. right to the customers and they were actually very receptive towards okay. our product when we when they looked at the overall ui ux how e easy it was to use mm -hmm. right and how we were actually showing them what is what was necessary for them to take action mm -hmm. right it was it is not like giving them hundreds of parameters right. and using none right give them five parameters okay that these are the top five drivers who are you can say unnecessary stopping the vehicles or usually running delayed mm -hmm. right these are the five routes where your your loading and unloading or uh, maybe your tat can be better right. right these are the five customers where your detention is high mm -hmm. right these are the five loading points where your loading time is high right. right so those are the parameters where they were able to clearly see the difference and take action that okay if i improve this mm -hmm. right it will it is going to impact my business as well okay so you know considering transporters have been very slow adopters of tech and you know getting tech across to them is a very uh, difficult task or was a difficult task how did you overcome that hurdle especially when you know way back when you started yeah so i mean when we started we were aware of this challenge from day one mm -hmm. right because when we were meeting in these customers as well we have seen their offices right what kind of a people they have to use the software right so it was a big challenge right so what we have decided that who for every customer we are going to have a better hand holding right okay. in terms of having a dedicated onboarding implementation team which and and obviously when we were building a, a a kind of a comprehensive software it is much more complex than just a gps tracking True. right so it requires a good kind of iq good mindset right so we were aware of that those challenges so we had a onboarding team implementation team just after the sales mm -hmm. which is typically you can say work in a hyper care mode with the customer okay. for almost 45 to 60 days uh -huh. right where we kind of train them about all the use cases how do you use that in a uh, most ideal scenario mm -hmm. right and any challenges which they are facing so that's a hyper care period which we actually provide to every customer post that we actually provide a dedicated account manager also okay so post hyper care also if your team is facing any challenges mm -hmm. our team is there to provide and help you solve those challenges and that was the first time in industry which we started with because our peer peer companies and other competitors they were not giving that kind of support it was mostly the remote call support kind of a call center mm -hmm. and it was not a hyper care or training all these things mm -hmm. apart from that we also started a fleetex academy which okay. was kind of a you can say our way of giving back to the ecosystem mm -hmm. where anyone not just from our customers but anyone in the ecosystem can actually enroll for those uh, courses okay. where we are not just talking about the logistics from the scratch how does it work transportation etc what are the challenges how do we solve them and what role technology can play and what role free tech can also play oh, okay. and that's a complete course which we provide to a lot of our customers team as well okay right so that they can also improve their skill set and also you can say go to the you can say actually grow in your in their career as well so no, while we speak of tech and a lot of things happening around tech one of the transition this industry has seen is the influx of youngsters hmm. now that did real did that really help you boost your business yeah i think it was a big blessing for us in our early days that uh, we met one of these youngsters in or maybe you can say second generation third generation person in terms of uh, piyush ladda from shivani career in indore right right and he is a graduate from nit trichy um, uh, have studied logistics from us mm -hmm. right and he was the one who actually helped us enter into the trucking okay. from taxi fleet management uh -huh. to the full fledged trucking fleet management as uh -huh. well so in the early days we met in 2018 right and uh, he actually told us that what is the 20% which is different from uh, you can say normal fleet management in trucking right 80% problem statement could be similar right. for any fleet Correct. but that 20% extra which is due to the business nature of trucking right that is something where uh, we got a lot of insights lot of understanding from piyush he actually helped us uh, build that product especially the trip management mm -hmm. delays delay management uh, tat management your okay. load detention loading yeah around driving behavior and he has been our customer since then 
Okay. Right. And he has got a lot of, you can say, improvement in his, uh, you can say, overall operations and overall customer satisfaction as well. Right. So uh, I would uh, like to give a, a huge thanks <laughs> to him as well that uh, because of him, uh, he, we were able to build this product. Right. And we still keep getting, uh, you can say, a lot of insights from him. Like now we are building a, a full flesh transport ERP as well. Right. Okay. Where you can actually manage all your vehicles as well as your market vehicles, all your PNL compliances, mm -hmm. everything, right? Whatever operations a transporter, typical transporter is having, you can manage end to end into Fleetech software, mm -hmm. right? So we keep talking to him. We keep getting a lot of insights. The another person who, who has helped us a lot is uh, Abhishek uh, from BLR, right? right? Uh, he has actually helped us a lot in terms of using our software and taking the tracking to the next level. Absolutely. Right? I mean, so, Abhishek is wonderful. I mean, yes. His ideas so, are… So, so his whole, whole control tower is using our product. Okay. Right. And he has actually, uh, you can say, achieved a lot of efficiency improvement, productivity improvement mm -hmm. and overall customer satisfaction also. I mean, recently I met him, he was telling that a lot of customers are now happy and wants to actually work with him even at, at premier, premium because he is actually, uh, you can say, reaching on time. Uh, most of his vehicles are reaching on time and he's able to actually do it in more proactive manner rather than reactive manner. Absolutely. Right. Uh, so those were the new age uh, people, right, who are now coming up and actually taking the business to the next level using Absolutely. technology. Absolutely. So uh, what are the current, what, what's the current product portfolio of Fleetex? Yeah, so we started, so I mean, I would divide it into three layer now. One, the base layer is the IoT layer where we have a lot of sensors right there from GPS to OBD to fuel sensors. We have actually worked on fuel sensors uh, uh, for almost two years before rolling it out into the market. Mm -hmm. So because that algorithm was very important for us to build where we can actually detect a very accurate fill and theft alerts okay. right, and give the right consumption to the fleet owners. Mm -hmm. And fuel being a uh, highest contributor in terms of the cost, mm -hmm. right? A uh, lot of theft usually happens and a lot of leakages mm -hmm. happens into the fuel. So fuel monitoring is one of our solution. And then there are, uh, you can say, uh, temperature sensor for cold chain monitoring, mm -hmm. uh, drum sensor for RMC vehicles, your loading vehicles right. as well, your safety locks as well for cargo monitoring, cargo safety. Mm -hmm. And now recent is the dash cam, which is for the driver safety as well. So this is the IoT layer, which is the base layer. On top of it, we have workflows and automation mm -hmm. where you can manage all your drivers, vehicles, compliance, PNL, your uh, invoices, your eBay bill, your challenge, your end-to-end, -end, your typical operations, mm -hmm. right? That is also connected with the IoT layer. Earlier, what okay. was happening that you were using GPS stacking of some other vendor, ERP of some other vendor, right. uh, some other in accounting module of some other vendor. Correct. And it was very difficult to you to integrate and maybe uh, have the data flow between all these vendors. What we are trying to achieve is that we will bring everything into our platform, mm -hmm. which is very seamlessly connected so that you don't need to juggle into the or maybe hassle into the integration uh, challenges. Right. right. And so that is that is our workflows and automation mm -hmm. layer. Our third layer is the AI and analytics. Okay. which is now we are sitting on a huge data, right? What do we do with this data, right? Can we actually have a better driver score, right? Where we can actually, uh, uh, based on the AI, right? We can actually uh, rank your drivers and actually help you with the uh, driver scoring. Can we build a truck routing solution? Because we have so much data of Indian roads, truck mm -hmm. going there, right? Their sizes as well, because Google does not provide that. But right. if I can tell you that, okay, Delhi to Mumbai, 85% of your uh, of our transporters are running through this route, mm -hmm. right? That can be helpful for people, right? Because sometimes there are no entries, you cannot go within Absolutely, the city, yes. etc., etc., right? And then there are different other use cases as well, where we are trying to actually uh, look at, uh, let's say, uh, for for compliance management, eway bill as well, like mm -hmm. eway bill auto extension, okay, right? Where uh, if the vehicle is delayed, mm -hmm. right? you need to actually extend the yes. e bill. Otherwise, you will uh, receive the fine. So how do you automate that automatically based on Ooh, the delay lovely. management? So we predict the delay. Basis uh -huh. that we in advance extend the e bill to, you can say, our next period. Right? So those kind of things, automation which people are using, which was very difficult for them to manage 
right to all these compliances etc so these are the three layers there are future roadmap as well which i will talk about <laughs> later as well that apart from these three layer right. what we are trying to build as our future roadmap can you delve a little more into the uh, fleet management system and the transport management system hmm. how helpful is that and how does it actually work yeah so i think uh, as i mentioned that earlier it was you can say uh, full of opaque operations and disconnected systems right a typical transporter was struggling in getting the a very high level view of what is happening in their operations right especially at the fleet owner level or maybe uh, any transporter level mm -hmm. right so and and that also becomes a challenge which i will talk uh, later on that the how do you actually get a sense that your ground level or your mid layer is working efficiently or not right and obviously you cannot remove the uh, people from your system completely Absolutely. right you need some manual intervention but you try to actually automate as much as possible right so earlier what was happening it was just limited till the vehicle tracking system right mm -hmm. you track the vehicle you call the driver and you also tell the customer also on call right that was typically it was managing and then the rest of your operations were purely manual spreadsheet uh, pen and paper driven right right whether it's your service maintenance your tire management your inventories mm -hmm. your compliances your pnl your driver settlement your trip sheet your payments etc etc or even your receivables as well right everything was manually driven people having a lot of you can say a lot of people doing that right. and lot of you can say records you are maintaining which obviously is very error prone right and True. having a paper and then trying to find out something from that or maybe uh, uh, finding a pattern was very difficult so first thing was that when we talk about fms fleet management for us is that where you bring all their operations not just tracking piece which is driver and the vehicle but your other part of operations related to your business also become uh, you can say digitized mm -hmm. and then you connect that telematics data to your operation data in a seamless manner that's what fleet management is for us mm -hmm. right and that's what we are trying to solve when i say mm -hmm. that telematics data with the workflows combined is a unified solution which we are trying to provide to the fleet owners okay when i say transport management system mm -hmm. so transport management system for a transporter is all about your you can say getting the vehicle uh, you can say or maybe let's say having a challan's consignment done your uh, eve bill uh, being done your tracking your uh, invoice freight settlement everything right mm -hmm. Ar around all these pieces which typically is a piece where you do a business with a consigner right or maybe any shipper right so whatever interaction collaboration you are doing with that shipper is it automated or not mm -hmm. maybe let's say your invoice generation to the shipper also is it automated is it one click or not earlier it was manual True. you had a format Correct. you need to fill the details manually now it is automated wonderful right so end to end till the fleet settlement everything is automated into our platform so you don't need to do anything manually obviously someone needs to be there to use the product true right you cannot remove that but you actually have that solves two problems you have all the system on cloud you all the data into the cloud and you can go back and check any history anything right. around that you can find the pattern easily through the analytics mm -hmm. what is happening where i'm losing money is my route is profitable or not is my vehicle is profitable or not is my service maintenance uh, data or cost is going high or not mm -hmm. right what are the parameters is it related to my driving behavior or not can you match your driving behavior data with your service maintenance data or not right earlier it was not possible right maybe your driver is doing a lot of hard braking hard acceleration mm -hmm. that eventually impacts your service maintenance cost or maybe your fuel mileage also so you can find those patterns which was very difficult earlier let's say your tire management how do you figure out your tire cost or maybe if you need to because tire keeps changing into different vehicles right right you keep doing repair and keep changing it but with our platform where it is connected with the telematics data you can calculate a tire kilometer irrespective of vehicle it is being in right so you can manage all those things you can check the tire history you can check which oem tire is working well uh -huh. for me giving me more profits or not Right. right because these are the costs which really impacts the overall 
uh, you can say transport business operations. Absolutely. Right. So those are the things I think we are trying to solve for people. Uh, the next big challenge for transporters has been road accidents, hmm. and you have no, no, are also offering dash cams. Yeah. Now, how does that help solve the problem? Yeah, I think we all know that accidents are a big challenge in India as well, right? Uh, almost, I think, twenty percent of the accidents, overall accidents, are are having because of trucks, right? Uh, within trucks, also, I think uh, most of the there are primary reasons why accidents are happening. It could be over speeding, night driving, right? Uh, fatigue driving, right? Your uh, vehicle health. Uh, if it is uh, workable or not, right? Uh, lane changing, etc. So I think earlier the use case was only limited till the oil and gas industry or very specific industries, True. right? But when you have, you can say, industry like e-commerce where you need to reach on time, and consumer expectations are also changing, right? Everyone is pushing the driver and the transporter to reach early, right? And driver is also and transporter is also because of the margin pressure, etc. They are also doing a lot of overloading of the vehicle, right? Using the single driver to run for longer hours, right? And that actually creates or maybe become the root cause for these accidents overall. But the other challenge which it also solves is that if the driver is not at fault, right? And someone else is at and is still the driver is being blamed because there is right. always a myth that badi gadi wale ke hi galti mani jayegi. Correct. Right. And we have seen those cases in our videos at different customers layer where, where uh, someone was coming on the bike from the front. There was no divider. The bike uh, gets skidded and comes below the truck. Right. And it was not a driver fault. Absolutely. And that actually helped the driver and transporter. Uh, uh, to avoid the police case. Right. Recently, there was a case where a bike was going, it hit the buffalo, then the biker fell down and it comes under the truck. Because truck was moving right. in a, his lane, right. but he hit uh, to the buffalo, he comes to the this lane and the got hit. Right. Again, the same case. Right. And Naturally, there are the blame would go to the driver yes. if there is no evidence. Yes. So, the law which was coming recently of the driver yes. that he will face a 10 year. Hit and run, yes. Right? I think dash cam can be very handy in those such cases where driver is not always at fault. Absolutely. But having said that, I think driver lives are also very important. Uh, and obviously your vehicle is also a costly one. So for that to solve, right, you need a real time coaching. Over speeding is something which is not giving you the real time coaching. It is still, you can do the post analysis. But if the driver is sleepy, if the driver is fatigued, if the driver is doing the distracted driving, let's say using a phone, a lot of drivers are now putting the phone and watching oh, the movie, yes, yes. keeping the headphones and still driving in night. Yes. Right. And those are the things which you can actually, uh, you can say, uh, give the feedback through the dash cam. Because the computing is happening at the edge, right? And we also have a lot of, you can say, uh, uh, algorithms at the firmware level where if there is there is any collision happens, it auto extract the video before 10 seconds and after 10 seconds. Okay. So that you can have evidence because yeah. post accidents, what happens to the dash cam, you never know. Right. Right. It can get burned, it can get damaged, etc. Et but it will extract the video and send it to the cloud. And also what we have seen is that that there are cases where we have seen live that a driver was very sleepy. Mm -hmm. Our dash cam was giving continuous alert. The control room was also getting the continuous alert. But sometimes driver's phone are switched off. How do you actually communicate the driver? Uh -huh. So there is a voice communication also, two-way communication through the camera. Okay. Where you can actually wake up the driver, calling them through the camera itself. Oh, lovely. Right. So and there are cases where the secondary driver who was sleeping, right, gets wake up. Uh, the driver uh, washes his uh, face, switch the driver, and now the second driver is running the vehicle, right. right? So that actually helps you save those kind of accidents which are happening through the fatigue or mobile or maybe 
usually in night drowsiness right. drowsiness is right? a natural thing to happen yeah, distraction yeah. Uh, sometimes you don't you can say uh, look at the dividers etc right, right. right and roads are uh, empty so you kind of over speed and doing the quick lane change so a lot of these cases can be solved through the power of ai dash cams where edge mm-hmm. computing is happening and giving you the live uh, real time driver coaching also but rajesh you know with the cost of trucks going up the value of consignments running into crores at times does the dash cam cost become very marginal or very irrelevant that transporters are now willing to invest in it have you seen that shift so i think that's the mindset change which will which is started happening right uh, earlier people were looking at it as a as a immediate cost right, right. not as an investment but uh, slowly they have started looking at it as a long term investment where uh, they have started seeing these values when we show these videos which i have just talked about to these potential customers they they are able to relate it very easily right right that they have also faced such everyone situations everyone would have everyone would right? have so so those are the things where i mean for example right we also have a cargo monitoring camera also uh-huh. a third view of the camera okay right so typically you get only driver facing or road facing mm-hmm. but now you have a cargo facing where if something is happening in your container or let's say if there is any open body container and some people are also coming so right. through our ai you can actually detect the uh, uh, people also okay. in in your container or in your cargo mm-hmm. view right which can actually help you prevent cargo theft Absolutely. right so you exactly know what is happening within your container right and then some people are also coming up with i mean we also have a fourth view of the camera mm-hmm. right what is happening rear right if you want to actually okay. have it let's say someone is carrying you can say a big glasses in a open body container like we one of our customer is mm-hmm. is carrying that and one of his challenges was that his glasses were getting uh, you can say stuck with some other things in oh. the top right mm-hmm. so he wanted to have this rear view right let's say or maybe uh, the 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 vehicles like cash carrying vehicle right mm-hmm. in the banks mm-hmm. right. they also need a four view camera because it is very sensitive if someone is chasing them or not right so there are different use cases very india india centric right mm-hmm. we are working with one of the power company also where one of the use cases were they have open body container and they want a man detection from behind okay right through the cargo view right so that that's where the ai comes into picture where we are actually identifying based on the patterns right uh, that what are the use cases can mm-hmm. so i think people's mindset is getting changed and i think adoption will increase slowly because now shippers are also pushing that right, right? like for example we work with unilever also <laughs> so one of the biggest use case is that they want to actually educate the drivers and they want to prevent the road accidents okay. while uh, the drivers are carrying the unilever's finished product right so there are lot of initiatives happening at the multiple stakeholders level mm-hmm. right everyone is concerned about the driver safety driver lives but i think the major push will come through the government as well right Absolutely. that if government has really wants to reduce the accidents on the road now the roads are very uh, great yes. right and that also uh, you can see increase the chances <laughs> of the accidents because <laughs> the roads are very boring right and you i mean there is a higher chance that you get uh, drowsy uh, yeah and drowsy and, and distracted also yes yes so for those cases and i think that's why restrooms and uh, you can say stoppages are working mm, right. are, are being built where drivers can take rest and etc so i think uh, government push will also improve the overall adoption of the dash cam in the near future you know back in the days when uh, tracking devices were installed in trucks so drivers were very you know uh, they were not very happy with that shift mm. so we have heard of cases of you know, the wires being cut or hot yeah. water being dropped on the devices and that was just a tracking device so yeah. now putting a camera which monitors them 24/7 <laughs> how do the drivers take it so i mean in in the initial days drivers were uh, it was uh, kind of a privacy breach for them right uh, they were not very happy and now i think it's like uh, kind of a big boss watching them <laughs> right and so what they have started doing that they have started putting clothes on the camera <laughs> whenever they are doing something which is not supposed to be watched by the transporter or fleet owner or maybe if they are smoking or something right and maybe talking on the phone they started putting that cloth on the camera so that it, it does not get recorded so we have created that alarm also uh-huh. that if someone puts the camera it also gets an alarm to the transporter and control room that okay driver is putting a camera uh, cloth okay. on the camera you should talk to him 
and ask him to actually remove that camera because otherwise it defeats the purpose right right so yeah i mean drivers will also realize that okay it is mandatory if they need to run the vehicle it is for their safety right ultimately we are trying to coach them to have a better driving a better lives right because i think one of the reason why a lot of people are not opting driving as a profession is that the the working conditions are not that great right and a lot of accidents a lot of these cases usually happen right and insurance wise and uh, you can say after accident what happens the life gets uh, really tough for them so to actually have a better life better working environment for them better safety for them as well right for eventually for their family i think they will sooner realize that it is important right it is we are not trying to breach into their privacy it is important to to actually save them save their lives it actually benefits them at the end yes. of the day yes yes so you know, while uh, we just spoke roads have become better trucks have better, have become better but trucks on the whole are still doing you know anywhere between 350 to 400 kilometers a day hmm. how can freetex help in improving this efficiency no i think one of the case is that if you really want to <coughs> actually achieve what trucks are achieving in us and china which is 800 kilometers right. uh, per day right uh, in us i think uh, there is a government mandate of electronic logging devices yes tachometer and is what they use that can also be done in india where you are allowing a particular driver to run only for 8 hours with the proper breaks in between right. so that a driver is also not fatigued right and then you kind of have a relay system right where one driver is switching to the other i mean post your duty gets ended the other driver takes on takes over yes and you don't need to wait you don't need to stop and i think lot of express vehicles in india they are doing that also yes. having a two driver system yes where they are actually able to achieve 600 700 km with two True. drivers True. wherever they need to reach to let's say delhi mumbai or delhi uh, ahmedabad right on a in a express manner right express vehicle so they typically have these two drivers the only constraint is that is your driver uh, you can say healthy or maybe not very fatigued to run the vehicle or not i think if we are able to achieve that so that because safety is also important for the vehicle True. for the cargo for the driver as well i think we will be able to achieve now we have a better roads obviously that will also help yes. you can say maintaining speed and everything i think vehicle wise it is not a constraint the only constraint was how you are going to run and obviously the whether your margins allow that or not right are you getting the margin margins to have two drivers on one truck right True. so i think it requires uh, you can say consideration from both shipper as well as you can say transporter that i am going to you can say run 600 km and deliver on time because consumer demands are also increasing now right. i think with 15 minute delivery right you actually need it will impact the overall you can say cycle of the transportation so for that to happen right everyone needs to collaborate right that okay you also need to pay premium for those vehicles so that i can actually put multiple drivers because if i am going to put single driver and he is going to continuously run for 18 hours so possible that's not possible right possible. so so for two drivers you need to also pay something a premium and then i can actually achieve that 600 there are lot of customers of us who are able to achieve 600 700 km in a day with two drivers now how much is freetex help them you know in managing that entire uh, system yeah i think so so i think for freetex i think for them to manage multiple drivers on a particular job particular vehicle we have a you can say system in place where you can do the driver scheduling that okay from this to this uh, this driver will work their leave management when they are on the work when they are not so all the driver scheduling and driver management is one of the module in fleetex as well okay apart from that as i mentioned the safety becomes a concern in this case you can also you can say put fatigue alarms in our system where let's say if you want your driver to take a half a half an hour break after every 4 hours and if the driver is not taking you get an alert right right in that case you can make sure that your driver is taking enough rest before continuing the journey right the other thing which can happen which is still less in adoption that because you don't know if the driver is changing or switching or not right right because there is no identification mm-hmm. so we also have that solution where based on the 
driver cards right you can identify who is running the vehicle okay. or maybe through the dash cam also that can you can possible, detect yes. the face and say that okay this driver is now running the vehicle right so those are the things i mean you can put a lot of checks lot of balances to actually uh, uh, making sure that your driver and vehicle is safe and once that is there right you can actually run for a longer and continuously without it stopping right having come so far what are the areas of improvement you think that this industry needs so i think as i mentioned one of the major thing which should definitely uh, uh, need an improvement is is the skill manpower okay. right i think people are little skeptical working with the transporters in their offices right and i think that requires a big push right where we train people and having let's say some colleges uh, o- opening logistic related or supply chain related right. transportation related courses so that they can learn about it they can see a career as a profession in the logistic industry and in the technology industry <clears throat> so that's one thing i think second is that i think the a little mindset change from the fleet owners perspective right i think even today people are not uh thinking technology as an investment they are thinking it as a cost center right right so until unless that gets change your lower level or your hierarchy is not going to change their mindset as well right so that initiative that okay technology is important and it is an investment for the long term to have i mean it's not an option it is a necessity for survival absolutely right and they needs to understand it i think a lot of people have understood it during the covid that why it is important why technology will play a significant role and whoever was using technology at that point of time they actually got survived for the better right so that mindset mindset shift at the top is very important and i think that will happen as soon as the second generation third generation people will start coming into those businesses right otherwise that's not possible third is that lot of you can say challenges in terms of adoption at the lower level is because of that if they are not using technology they are on its own right i mean they are not sharing data they are keeping a lot of secrets with them and they believe that if the technology comes into play a lot of transparency and visibility go to the top right so that mindset and i think that will get changed once you have a better margin so that you can have a better salary for these people as well right okay. because i mean 20 30000 rupees guy right working and using these products these software right would always hesitate in using them and trying to find some or other thing that okay it is very difficult or either he will leave the job right, right. so you actually need to pay uh, a a significant salary to these people because if they will not use technology it is not going to solve any purpose for you as well absolutely right, right. so the overall hierarchy at a transporter level needs to have a significant mindset change from the top and it it has to start from the top has to absolutely no you know having come so far uh, you have a bundle of products to offer anything more coming up in the near future in terms of products and services any surprises in the bag <laughs> no i think uh, one thing which is important where we have not gone into yet is is that how do we help our customers get more business right or maybe how do we complete the overall cycle right that we have covered till the freight settlement or invoicing for a transporter the remaining piece is that giving the payment or maybe making the payment or taking the payment right that last leg mm-hmm. to complete the cycle so we are thinking in that direction not yet it is very early the other thing which we are thinking is that we also work with a lot of enterprise customers for the tms and visibility mm-hmm. right where they also require a lot of you can say trucks uh, uh, for their businesses right and then within the fleet owners also a lot of large truck owners also requires market vehicles right so they go to the market apart from their own vehicle based on the demand they also acquire vehicles from the market so is there a possibility of a closed marketplace within my customers let's say transporter 1 requires vehicle 
uh, on the ad hoc basis can i connect with connect him with my transporter too right who has a vehicle available at that particular location in a very seamless manner it is for my customer within my customer okay. in a more seamless manner it is not a open kind of a marketplace but within my customers very close loop very business. close loop because both customers trusted trust me right they trust my platform and i am not getting into their business i am just helping them Absolutely. to get in a seamless manner and usually with the market vehicles you have a lot of trouble in getting the tracking because market yes. vehicles usually don't have gps or it right. is difficult to integrate the api just for one vehicle but in my in this case they will have a instant visibility of the vehicle which is getting Absolutely, assigned yes right so as soon as the trip gets ended the visibility is over mm-hmm. so you can find those uh, you can say i mean it's a collaboration within my customers right so we are very early uh, in that direction taking a lot of feedback from the customers our customers whether this will be helpful or not what are the challenges you see right so i think these are the two lines and then obviously third is that we are going to have a lot of ai into play okay right so we are working in uh, that direction a lot we are based on these huge amount of data which we are sitting on how we can actually uh, mm. uh, you can just solve some of the very unique challenges right with the power of ai finally uh, any targets for the next 5 years i mean how many customers would you or how many trucks would you have on boarded well i think next 5 years i will say that our idea is to so we we kind of cater to mid to large size of the fleet owners right we are not into the smaller right. fleet owners because we believe that smaller fleet owners usually don't have that many use cases to solve True. right and so uh, we believe that technology can play a role when you have a larger fleet complex fleet to handle right and that's where i think we can actually uh, be useful so we obviously want to become a leader we are already uh, there right especially in the mid to last segment we want to take our leadership ahead especially in terms of the product road map as well as you can say acquiring and solving some of the challenges of the fleet owners which are not solved yet right so help them with the more business and uh, you can solving their reduction in the cost and keep innovating right i mean that has been our product usp i mean that right. has been the usp and dna of the company that we are product first company technology first company we are not yet into the platform and selling different things right so we want to continue that continue doing that and also want to become let's say in 5 years we want to onboard let's say let's say million vehicles at least on our platform right uh, from the transporters and having a good market share of let's say 20 25% that was our interaction with vinit sharma co-founder and ceo of fleetex It is very clear that there are various solutions for the industry which aim to improve efficiency, productivity, make operations simple and at the same time bring down accidents. Fleetex provides all of these. We will be back again next week with another set of solutions under the Moving India with Nai Soch series where we will address the issue of night driving which often or more than often leads to road accidents you have been watching trans india real people real emotions until next week stay safe and drive safe jain